Hey there, welcome back to another video. This time, a uh, little bit of an update. I uh, got a few DVDs to show you guys that I picked up fairly recently. But really what this is, it's uh, just showing you some Fangoria magazines that I got in a trade with a friend of mine named Shonda. And I traded some laser discs that I had that I didn't wasn't really watching or using for some a bunch of uh, Fangoria magazines. And it's a pretty good start to a collection. I've been looking to get some actual issues of Fangoria for years. I just haven't really been able to find any. And some of these are really rare. So to get them for pretty much just trading for Laserdiscs was a pretty good deal. Uh, I do have Fangoria, like issues of Fangoria uh, in the scans that were scanned uh, from other people's collections that were, and then were posted online that I downloaded. But um, it's not the same looking at something on your computer as it is actually having the magazine in your hands. It's a very uh, cathartic, sort of unique experience that I think a lot of kids nowadays are missing, missing out on because they're so used to, oh, I'm just on my Kindle or I'm on, I don't read books. It, it, they don't have that connection with what they're reading as people like myself are used to when they go to the library and they check out books and they buy books. Trust me, physically holding a book in your hands and reading it or a magazine is, is, is a much more memorable experience and a much more personal experience than it is to just read something on your computer or to read something on a Kindle. I mean, that's cool. But I mean, it's just not the same. There's no connection. There's, the connection isn't there. Uh, it's a completely different experience that I definitely do recommend younger uh, kids or you know younger people to definitely who might be watching this video to definitely experience more because it is a very unique thing, especially when it comes to things like Fangoria magazines or uh, big coffee table books that have some just really glorious, really wonderful fold-out photos and things like that. Um, but yeah, and speaking of Fangoria, I also recently, for five dollars, just five bucks, DVDRs of Fangoria issues that were ripped and scanned by uh, somebody but this time they're in CBR format, which means they're already in a format that you can automatically use in a comic book reader uh, program on your computer, which is, I can't wait to get those because the ones that I do currently have are, are, are JPEGs, and that's a pain in the ass. I mean, I, you can't really read them the normal way. I mean, I can read them, but it's just a pain in the ass to have to use the Windows Photo Viewer to read magazine scans. In, in CBR format, though, you can they you can you can read them like you would a magazine, but only but on your computer. Which I'm really looking forward to doing that sometime when I get those in the mail. Um, but uh, and it was five bucks. It was a great deal. It's all the Fangoria's up to 2014, which is fine to me. It doesn't have up to 2016. Not a big deal. Not a big deal to me at all. But anyway, let's get started, shall we? Uh, showing you guys this stack of Fangoria magazines that I got in a trade now. These are from all different decades. There's ones from the 80s, 90s, and from the 2000s, and some from the 2010s, I believe. So it's a very uh, eclectic batch of Fangoria magazines. Uh, some of these are actually pretty rare, and one of the main reasons why is because Fangoria is one of their biggest warehouses that had a lot of their back issues. It burned down, uh, sadly. So a lot of the back issues ended up becoming really highly collectible over the years, and they still are. And these are all in great shape. So here we have um, uh, Fangoria. Uh, I think it's issue number uh, issue number one ten. Uh, talks about Hellraiser three, Hell on Earth, as well as Split Second. Is a really cool little article about Split Second, a film that I really like. Um, talks about Naked Lunch as well. So yeah, this is this is uh, Fangoria issue number one ten. Uh, this is Fangoria issue number. I'm just trying to see which where it is. Is it? It's not telling me. Yeah, they're not showing what the issue number this one is. Uh, I don't know what exactly which one this is. It'll probably show it in the magazine itself. 
but um, this is one from 1988. It talks about bad dreams, uh, Maniac Cop, uh, Slaughterhouse Rock, which is cool because I'm a fan of Slaughterhouse Rock. It also talks about Poltergeist 3. So, uh, yeah. Really cool. Really cool to have these. This is one of the older ones I have. This is from 1983. It's in great shape for being that old. This is a Fangoria. Uh, this is an issue, one of the earlier issues, because it's from the 80s. Uh, this one talks about the keep, as well as, as uh, a bunch of other things. Talks about Strange Invaders, uh, the power. Fangoria just had, I love these covers. Their covers are great. And the content is great, too. As a horror fan, this is this is stuff that you definitely want to get your hands on sometime, if you can. Here's another issue of Fangoria. This one also talks more about Hellraiser. This is issue number 112. Uh, this also talks about Alien 3, uh, Sleepwalkers, The Vagrant. Here we have another one from the 80s. This one is uh, talks about Cellar Dweller, as well as Poltergeist 3 again, World Gone Wild, Brain Damage, um, and uh, Deep Space. Yeah, it actually talks about Deep Space, which I think is a really cool, fun movie. So that, that'll be a fun thing to read, talking about Deep Space. This one, I love it. See, I'm a huge fan of Darkman, so this is really, really awesome to have. This is the, this one talks about Darkman, the Boneyard, this is issue number 96, it talks about Flatliners, uh, it talks about Maniac Cop 2, Sinjinor, which is so great, I mean, with Darkman. And then this one is, uh, this one talks about Friday the 13th, past, present, and future, so it talks about a bunch of Friday the 13th stuff. Uh, this is a special issue about Friday the 13th, it talks about Friday the 13th Part 8. Uh, Nightbreed, Pet Cemetery, Special Effects, Puppet Master, Death House. Talks about uh, how they did some of the effects on the TV show on uh, Friday the 13th, the TV series. So, yeah, it's pretty, really cool. And all of these are in their own little, you know, plastic slip covers. It's really cool. And they're all in great shape. Here we have one that talks about Pumpkinhead. Also talks about Fangoria the series. I mean, uh, Friday the 13th, the series. Fangoria didn't really have a TV series, but it would have been cool to see that. Uh, Werewolf talks about the show Werewolf, Night of Living, uh, Return of Living Dead 2, talks about Cameron's Closet, Blood Diner, uh, Prison, on the bottom there. This is another one of the older ones that I have. Uh, this one is, and I put this in the wrong way here. Hold on a second, because I, I guess I put the put the issue in the wrong way in the little slip cover and I'm not these are these really these are really some of these are really old and rare like these older ones in particular are definitely harder to find than some of the newer ones although this is says 599 but really I got it for this issue probably nowadays it probably be more than that this talks about extra uh, talks about the grizzly effects of Steve Neal, talks about a Q, uh, as well as the sender, talks about Poltergeist, has some really cool uh, photos uh, with the cast and crew of the Poltergeist who worked on the effects, this one talks about Bram Stoker's Dracula, which is one of my all-time favorite horror films, also talks about Dr. Giggles, Maniac Cop 3, Candyman, Dario Gento's Trauma, and issue number 118. This one talks about Fright Night Part 2. Uh, Beetlejuice has a Beetlejuice poster in it. Talks about the Blob remake. Uh, so yeah, another good one. All of these are great. All of these are, I, I, I'm really glad to have. This one, is a, uh, I kind of started reading this already. It was pretty good so far. This is probably the oldest one that I believe I have. And this one is from 1982. This is... Uh, this one talks about, yeah, this is number 18, this is issue number 18, it talks about Rest in Peace, John Carpenter's The Thing, uh, The Beast Within, and the effects of, of Cat People, the remake. This one talks about Ticks, 
which I'm a big fan of. I love this movie, so it's really cool to see how they do the effects. It also is like a special issue that talks about all these other types of killer bug movies. This one, uh, yeah, it also talks about the Tommy Knockers and Needful Things and Jurassic Park. It's a 90s one. It's issue number 123. Then we have another one from the late 80s. This one is uh, th th talks about Dead Heat, which I think is a really cool movie. It also talks about Critters 2, Monkey Shines, Bad Dreams, Sleepaway Camp, The Dream Demon, and The Seventh Sign, as well as other things. This one, yeah, it Vampire in Brooklyn, which is a terrible movie. But it does talk about Castle Freak, which is cool. and It's still Fangoria. I mean, I'm, I'm, there's no, why would I complain? It's still Fangoria. Uh, talks about something called Seven Deadly Sins, where a bunch of directors were going to unite and do a horror anthology, which I guess didn't happen, because I had never heard of it until looking at this uh, cover of Fangoria. This is issue number 148. This is one of the later ones. Uh, I think it's from like the 2000s. Yeah, this is uh, this one talks about Cry Wolf. Um, uh, Exorcism, Emily Rose, Godzilla, Final Wars, Corpse Bride. It's issue number 246. This one talks about Blade Trinity, which is a piece of shit. But I have to admit, that's a pretty cool looking uh, Dracula. Uh, it sounds like they didn't use it very well. It sounds like to me. Uh, this is issue number two, 239. It talks about Dark Shadows. Some lost Dark Shadows thing that you will never see, which sounds kind of interesting. Assault on Pursuit 13 remake. Uh, White Noise. High Tension. This is one from uh, the late 90s because it talks about Species 2. It also talks about Halloween 7, TV show Millennium, Bug Buster, The Ugly, issue number... It doesn't say what issue number it is, because this is the UK... You know, there it is, issue number 172. I'm wondering, with some of the 90s ones, it seems like they don't tell me what the issue is, number is. Maybe they just did that to stop doing that or something, I don't know. Or maybe I'm just not looking in the right place. But anyway, here's another Fangoria. Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, the Devil's Rejects. This one talks about that. It's issue number 245. also talks about uh, Land of the Dead. Uh, also has a little interview with Bruce Campbell. This one is another 2000s one. It talks about Slither. Um, issue number 252. also talks about Silent Hill and Stay Alive. This one talks about Buffy the Vampire Slayer, the TV series. It's an uh, issue from the late 90s. Uh, it's, it's issue number 180. And uh, talks about the faculty, Storm of the Century, and Dreams from Dust Till Dawn 2. Here's one that talks about Saul. It's uh, issue number 236. also talks about Riding the Bullet, Ginger Snaps Back. See to Chucky, Resident Evil Apocalypse. This is issue number 238, which talks about See to Chucky. I have to admit, that's a pretty cool cover. Uh, showing Chucky reading Fangoria. Uh, it talks about Species 3, The Devil's Rejects, more about Blade Trinity, as well as The Grudge. This one is uh, talks about Constantine, which I do like that film. Uh, it's issue number 240. Also talks about Amityville Horror Remake, as well as uh, Boogeyman, and the Alone in the Dark film, which is a piece of shit. <laughs> this one is issue number 190. It talks about Pitch Black. It also talks about The Dead Hate the Living, Supernova, Sleepy Hollow, and Scream 3. This is issue number 234, which talks about Alien vs. Predator. Uh, and also has a top 25 Fright Flicks uh, list. And it also talks about Godzilla at 50, past, present, and future. So it's a little Godzilla blurb. It talks about Spider-Man 2, which is weird. I don't know why that's in there. It's not really a horror film. But I guess maybe Sam Raimi was working on it, so they thought we could just talk about it then. Uh, then we have uh, 
one that talks about Jeepers Creepers, issue number 206, also talks about the others and Ghosts of Mars, as well as Dario Gento's Sleepless. We have issue number 244, which talks about Land of the Dead. Uh, it talks about more other stuff, uh, the Exorcist uh, prequel, that was Rejects, uh, Dark Water. And then we have issue number 213, which talks about Dagon, Eight-Legged Freaks, uh, something called Cubby House, and uh, Sean Cunningham talking about, about Fr will Freddy versus Jason ever happen and verses and something on top which is very curious spider-man the lucio fulci connection what the hell did, what there's a connection between spider-man and lucio fulci that would be interesting to see that would be interesting to read about so yeah that's that's that for the fangoria magazines i'm really glad to have those it's a good deal as far as i'm concerned trade for those for you know laser discs that I'm not really using and then the rest of this stuff is some DVDs but I'll, I'll start out with a game actually Tomb Raider Legend Laura Croft Tomb Raider Legend I got this at Goodwill I've heard about to Laura Croft Tomb Raider I've seen the films but I've actually never played any of the games and this was pretty cheap it was in good shape so it was like, yeah, might as well pick it up because I like this type of game. I love Indiana Jones and Ever's Tomb. It's one of my all-time favorite games of all time. It's probably my favorite Xbox game. And this is a similar sort of thing with puzzle solving and adventure and action and stuff like that. And, and you know, looking for relics and things like that. So I'm looking forward to playing this sometime. And I've heard good things about it, too. I've heard, like, this is really good. So I'm really looking forward to playing it. And... Uh, Continuing with the miscellaneous stuff, I also picked this up, which is a little comic of The Shadow, which is a Dark Horse comic. It was a dollar, and it has it's sort of an anthology format. It talks about three different stories starring The Shadow. And now we get to the DVDs. This one I got for free, technically, because it was buy three, get one free. This is a film called Eden Log. I mainly got it, was curious about it, because... Good review on Bloody Disgusting, saying uh, mesmerizing, terrifying, your mind will be blown, a dark treat. And this one, it says, think the born identity set in an apocalyptic future with a dash of predator thrown in for good measure. And I guess that hooked me. What? Born identity in the future with predator? <laughs> they just they mentioned predator, so I'm in. I'm curious. Call me curious. And then I got this, which I'm really glad to get. This is the two-disc special edition of the War of the Worlds remake, uh, a film that I really liked, actually. I saw this in the theater when it came out, and I've been looking for this two-disc special edition for, feels like almost a decade, and I finally got it, and it's really nice to finally have this in my hands, because I'd always just find the regular edition that isn't, isn't the two-disc, and this is one that has a slipcover, this is what it looks like without the slipcover, and it opens, it folds out like this, and it has two discs in it, and there's a lot of special features on here. Interviews with Steven Spielberg and Tom Cruise, pre-visualization, pre talks about some of the effects, designing the enemy, uh, talking about how they made the tripods and the aliens, War Chronicles on set production diaries, the H.G. Wells legacy, and much more. So, yeah, I'm really glad to have this. And to be honest, this is probably the last film that Spielberg directed that I really, really liked. Then I got some wrestling DVDs, because I'm a big fan of wrestling, and these were good deals. And I got Hulk Hogan's unreleased collector series, because I, I am a big fan of Hulk Hogan. I'm a big fan of the Hulkster, and I have the other uh, uh, Hulk Hogan DVD sets, and uh, this is a pr very affordable, and it has a lot of matches on here. Um, and yes, he said some racist shit and did some fucked up shit, but you know, if I'm willing to give Mel Gibson another chance, I'm willing to do that for, for Hulk Hogan. Plus, that was stuff that happened behind closed doors, it should have never been leaked to the public, and it happened years ago. So, as far as I know, he could have completely changed his ways, it could have been a much, it could have improved, and could have been a really nice person and, and, and could have realized his mistakes. He's apologized for his mistakes already. If anything, what Gawker did is more fucked up than uh, because they bet betrayed his privacy. They completely 
and the Bubba the Love Sponge guy also, you know, fucked things over too. I mean, yes, he said some fucked up shit, but also he was going through a rough time in his life. So, um, you know, I'm not excusing it. I'm not condoning, you know, his racist rants, but at the same time, he's only human. We make mistakes. And, uh, you know, even Hulk has said things like that. I'm not perfect. I've, I've had my, you know, good and bad moments in my life, but my fans have always been there for me, and I really appreciate that, and, and you know, that, that's how I feel about Hulk, you know, he's not perfect, but there are a lot of other wrestlers who are in the Hall of Fame and have DVD sets that aren't perfect either, so, um, yeah, so I'm definitely glad to have this, though, because there's a lot of cool matches on here. They, uh, it chronicles, it basically starts out with some of his matches in uh, the his early matches before the WWF, then it has some matches during when he was in the WWF and the w, of course the WWE now, and then it goes into WCW and then uh, his return to the WWE. So there's a lot of matches on here. Um, you got stuff like his matches against Sergeant Slaughter, Ric Flair, Vader, Sting, Bret the Hitman Hart, Big Boss Man, Triple H. Uh, Randy Macho Man Savage, uh, Bob Backlund, Ravishing Rick Rude. So yeah, it's a, it's a, there's not much in terms of documentary, but you know, for 20, these are 27 matches that were not released on DVD until, until uh, this got released. And if you're a fan of Hulk Hogan, it's definitely a must own. I mean, it's nine hours of Hulk Hogan matches and some little interviews as well. And then NWO for life, baby. NWO, the revolution. Uh, had to get this because I'm a big fan of the New World Order, the NWO. Uh, it's packed with over six hours of special features. It's got all this stuff. It's got a ton of matches on it. I've heard the documentary is disappointing because it's more of a kayfabe documentary in NWO. And that's not as interesting as it could be. Plus, there's no interviews with Hulk Hogan or, or Scott Hall. So, I mean, that's kind of disappointing. Um, but there is like an older, they might have some older interviews with Scott Hall and Hulk Hogan. I don't know. Cause I think there are some interviews on the original NWO DVD with them, but I, I don't know for sure. But either way, I mean, as a fan of the NWO, you know, I had definitely had to get this, uh, three disc sets, uh, chronicles all of the, the moments from the NWO. And, uh, so yeah, it was a good deal too. So yeah that's uh that's it that's it brother that's it for this uh fangoria magazine sh showing slash uh dvd uh update of sorts let's see if i can get nwo back in its case it's being uh disagreeable for some reason wow nwo you really don't want to <laughs> really does not want to go in here <laughs> It's just so strange. I'm sorry. I apologize. What the hell? I guess I'll slip it in later because it's just being being stupid. I don't. It's strange. It's not wanting to go in its slipcover. Okay. Uh, the NWO, even the DVD, is, is wanting to revolt. Uh, but anyway, thanks for watching, and as always, I will see you later. See ya.